Ta-da! Welcome everybody to SharePoint Dev Weekly. This is episode 34 and it is 8th of April 2019. And like last time, we, we realized last time when we started recording that we didn't have a visitor, but we fixed it for this time. Thank you, Walter, for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so on our way here to the office, we, we found him on our way there. So we said, yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> let's get him in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, Addis. Can you explain who you are or what's your background around SharePoint? <laughs> I'm the guy who's got uh, Samsung Galaxy Watch from Microsoft. Yeah, that's so unfair, actually. <laughs> um, hey, um, so as uh, this person with funny, funny English accent said, uh, my name is Addis. Um, working uh, in Syskit, that's this. Uh, Lovely company that brought USP docket many years ago and bringing uh, some other funny stuff around. And in the free free time, the other people are playing golf or playing guitar. I'm organizing a conference where those two funny uh, characters that I'm talking to are also speaking it. And actually, do we have the whole PNP speaking this year? Yes, we do. Yeah. We've got the whole PNP uh, team speaking. Pretty this much. Year. I, I think AC isn't arriving uh, because it's a one week after Las Vegas, but then anyway. I was going to say whole real PNP team. Oh, no, 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 cut. Ace is going to like we that. We will edit that. We will edit this. <laughs> and that's precisely, no, precisely the reason uh, I told you. We need, uh, we need to tease AC from time to time. All good. Absolutely. Um, it's called European Collaboration Summit. It's in Wiesbaden, very close to Frankfurt um, uh, in Germany on the end of May, precisely on 27th to 29th May. 27th, yeah. you've got two workshops delivered by the uh, lovely PNP people and Valdek. And um, that's one is going to be uh, focused only on SPFX and another one is going to be more generic architecture development uh, on top of SharePoint. Yeah. And then two breakout days with uh, yeah, different kind of uh, sessions uh, uh, going on around. Um, yeah, in the free, free time, I don't play golf. <laughs> you run conferences, which is well. The, the European Collaboration Conference uh, started yeah. as a in uh, Croatia uh, collaboration right. summit. So I mean, uh, it started in Croatia, right, uh, quite a few years back, and then it's grown to be a multi-thousand people attendee right. conference. So it, it's it's been highly successful, right? We started in 2012. Actually, three guys, uh, Nena, Tony Franco, and myself. Start in Croatia um, in, since uh, more, and we had also a local name, SharePoint Conference Adriatic, uh, basically focused on the Southern Europe region. But since we had, on the end, we had more visitors from the rest of the Europe than from the region. So we were like, okay, uh, this doesn't make sense anymore. We changed the name to European Collaboration Summit, moved it to Germany the last year. We stayed in Germany this year. And uh, last year we had 1,500 attendees. This year we just uh, went over 1,800. Nice. So let's, let's see what's the number we are going to reach on the end. But we are very, very happy with how it's going on. In the meantime, uh, in the, except of the, beside uh, Tony Nena and myself, we've got two other dodgy characters on board, Spence Harbor and uh, Matthias Seinig. <laughs> um, it did not make it easier, I need to tell, but we are surviving and yeah, we just want to welcome it all. The, the difference is this, uh, this is a community-based conference. We do ask for some fee because we need to cover our costs. We love community, but we are somehow not keen on paying for out of our pockets. So we uh, need to uh, ask uh, for some symbolic fee from the, uh, from the attendees, just basically to pay for their uh, Food, beverages, and uh, yeah, these few square meters, uh, they're uh, on there. But it's definitely in a very low three digit uh, numbers uh, price. Uh, we are not competing by price, uh, with price by, uh, by price with large conferences like uh, in the United States or uh, Europe. But from the, uh, because it's initiated and developed and run by community, but uh, Concerning the, considering the uh, content of the program and Vesco, you should know that the best you are the member of the content team. Uh, definitely, uh, the uh, this conference is on pair with all larger Office 365 and SharePoint shows in the world. Yeah, 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not, it's a European collaboration summit, so it's not such a part SharePoint, but obviously it's, it's part SharePoint and Office 365 right. as we well. So. well we, we, our origin always was SharePoint, and we are not even trying to hide it. it yeah. It's actually perfectly yeah. fine, it's perfectly good. We all are, we all have the SharePoint PTSP around us, that, that's okay. Um, but obviously we have got a lot of Azure, a lot of yeah. teams, a uh, yeah. lot of generic Office 365 and management stuff, both from uh, dev, IT pro, and business perspectives. For the first time, we have actually got the AWS truck to see what uh, what uh, the people from AWS, how what's their take on uh, all the collaboration stack, what they are doing. Yep. So this is going to be something new. We know that our audience is, my, is mainly coming from the Microsoft Edge, uh, Microsoft Corner, that's, that's not wrong. But let's we just uh, thought okay let's try to broaden the show to see how the uh, how those people are going to react on AWS being there and hearing about the AWS stuff. And anyway, if you think about, for example, development, uh, sure, Azure is is deeply integrated with Office 365 and Microsoft 365, right. and it's easy to do. But hey, there are customers who are using AWS as the chosen platform, and then you need to figure out how you integrate that to Microsoft 365. So um, I think it's a fair game. Um, people fair. are using that. Why why wouldn't we explain and cover those things? It's uh, a fair game. We actually let the AWS to choose their uh, sessions, and it was really uh, interesting for me to see, to observe what did they choose. Yep. Half of the sessions were about collaboration stuff with AWS. We will have uh, some uh, funny stuff with Alexa platform and everything there. But the other half of their session is actually Windows workflows on the uh, AWS. Yep. This, is, uh, this is the road they went with the second half of their session, which I actually yep. find totally cool. Absolutely. Now, um, Addis, uh, more mm. slightly more on the on your personal background. You're actually an MVP. You're actually a double MVP right now in two I different am. tracks. Right. So, you which are those? Just for the audience of the. Uh, I'm. I'm. Uh, well, I'm. Um, I'm the cured SharePoint MVP. So was, this is what we call now uh, Office Apps and Services, right? Yep. At least, yep. At, at least until we don't change it again. Uh, <laughs> sorry. And the second one is um, office development. Uh, since uh, my background is developer, and uh, I used to be proud to say like, that I spend a lot of my time without Visual Studio. Now I'm happy when it's a uh, day a week, to be perfectly honest. But uh, yes, I'm still, uh, especially now in my new position, basically I'm doing more with uh, Visual Studio again, which is fun. Um, and uh, Outlook and Word, right? <laughs> no, you 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 forgot PowerPoint. And you PowerPoint, yes, PowerPoint, yes. PowerPoint yes. There. And um, so I'm uh, with with the DevStack. I'm definitely uh, focusing on stuff uh, mainly on Azure Azure nowadays. Uh, yeah. Azure Azure App Service, um, Azure Functions. But then obviously talking to uh, CSOM, to Graph, to whatever uh, it is. I had interesting discussion a few years ago with these two great guys about uh, should we move out some code from the out of the client side and put it uh, in some measure workloads. Uh, now I'm no, 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 very no, no, no. back and then. No, 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 no. We have <laughs> right now that it was actually not a bad idea to uh, work that way. Yeah, my second, my second, uh, my second competence uh, of all competence, uh, second MVP of all this office dev. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's that's been in like. If we think think about the transition from few years back to now, I think more and more people are realizing that it makes more and more sense to put the business logic and long running tasks and everything else to the Azure and keep the UI as clean as possible and concentrate only on the on the on the UI thing is. So. In the cloud, in a in in a cloud, you don't have really a choice. I mean, on premises, yeah, sure. There's like if you're on premises, why would you put things in Azure? Sure, right? sure. Because you are on prime, you have the infra, you have servers, you have everything there. But if you are in a cloud, you don't have anything, and it has, sure. and you have the need to run cloud. processes, workflows, yeah. and so forth and so on. Yeah. You need to have them somewhere, and it cannot yeah. be in 365 because Microsoft will never, ever, ever allow us to deploy our assemblies to their servers. Of course, actual server side code. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I know you could. I wouldn't let you do that as well either. Jealous, right? <laughs> there we go. Because you know it's awesome. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so okay, before we go to the community articles and, and other discussions, um, Waldek, what have you been up to uh, since last week? I caught up on the uh, release of C CLI. So we had qu quite a few outstanding PRs. We went through through them. Um, we have new version of CLI available. 
and basically going through the release uh, or through additional uh, commands, issues, and so forth and so on. So working primarily around that. I'm trying to think if there was there was something on my mind that I wanted to mention, but due to our discussion about Office Dev and PowerPoint, I lost track, track of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. You can you can write beautiful. Uh... Do we call it office settings now? You can uh, write, write... Epins. Epins. <laughs> Whatever. You can do that now. Well, so actually, the last the last one last time when I created an add-in that is already I don't know four, three years back, four years back. I really haven't. There was there was a time when I created a few of them, like within one or two years span. It was like, yeah, that makes sense. But then things change. I moved to other things and never looked back. Sure. Sure. The other, so an interesting note, the other day I had a need to, I wanted to build an Excel sheet with, that would contain the data that I pulled down from an API. So I would have an API on the internet that I wanted to pull into Excel sheet. I was like, okay, so how do I call out an API from Excel? And sure, you can think of, yeah, maybe some function, whatever. But like, I work daily with TypeScript, JavaScript, and Node. So maybe there's something around that. And it turns I'm out sorry. that there is, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, it wasn't that. It was actually pretty cool. So apparently, there is an an add-in created by the. Uh, I think it's called nowadays. There was the uh, uh, the garage yep. group. I don't know. Their office office labs. No garage. Anyway, there's a group within Microsoft that does, let's say, the R and D work. Um, a lot of them around add-ins and and apps. And they created an add-in called a script script lab. So you can put that, pull in the add-in, and in the add-in you can create code. So you can, so think of a script editor web part for add-ins. For Office add-ins. Yes, for Office yes. add-ins. Yes. So you can just just pull it in and write code directly in Drive without the loops of ha having to create your own add-in, deploy it, yeah, and so forth. So yeah, exactly. And the cool thing is that you can also connect it to your GitHub uh, GIS. Mm -hmm. so you just just have your code there, pull it in, and run it within the context of a document. That's nice. It's really awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you pulled your data to Excel on the end. Yes, working like a charm. <laughs> nice. Every go. single day. Nice. <laughs> oh, now it's automatic reporting. Now, so is, um... that, is, that, is that what you are doing in Rancor? Just that I know. No. Okay. <laughs> That's other stuff. Now, uh, quickly on my side, I've been working on on uh, updated plans on the provisioning engine and provisioning service, uh, because we will have some cool announcements coming up on probably an SPC and new versions and all of that. But uh, more on that later. We SPC is coming pretty soon. Build is coming pretty soon, actually, as well. But I will be there as well, um, as long as I can register. Their uh, speaker registering <laughs> portal doesn't didn't like me to sign in, so I don't know what it is. But hey, you, it's always do you mean uh, speaker stretch portal or sessionize now in this case? And uh, no, whatever they're using for uh, whatever build is using for signing in. Anyway, don't worry about it. Actually. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Completely secondary. <laughs> let's go actually on the on the article. So let me share my screen and tell me when you can actually see yep. the screen. It's on. Cool. Oh, excellent. So a few uh, things. In two seconds, we see Vesta on the screen. There we go. I'm here. <laughs> now, um, so European SharePoint, uh, European Collaboration Summit um, is uh, www.collaborationsummit.eu, and uh, you can actually get more information around the, the event in here, uh, including uh, the program speakers and, and workshops, right? Can Anything you, you want to call out? Just because, just because speakers shortly, if, if you're fine with that, is uh, third uh, uh, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you see all, see all the nice people who actually mostly know what they are talking. Uh, from MVP community, Microsoft community, regional directors, uh, and Valdek. So is there anybody on the, yes, and me. So I have actually my own badge, like you, you see the MVP right. badge, the Microsoft badge, and, and I have my, my, my own badge. I am probably all the way down at the list, I would yeah, assume. Because, yeah, because I am in my own group, right? In my, in my own category. There you go. There you go. How there do I know, go. right? <laughs> so you sort alphabetically by first name, That that is new. <laughs> Why, not? Why not? Why not? Let's be casual, right? <laughs> Rather than <laughs> based on a last name. 
Anyway, um, and um, that's actually completely side discussion. So apparently we still keep on promoting this. Does this have a value for the community still? Just out of curiosity, because I, I wouldn't know. Obviously, I, know is, people, I know actually people still value that. OK, OK. Makes sense. The Microsoft certified, so my quickly explain a Microsoft certified solution master for SharePoint exists, or MCM Microsoft certified master existed mm -hmm. for what, five years? until uh, it was unfortunately the program was then uh, shut down but uh, because well we couldn't keep the material up to date and the costs were growing and all of that so somebody made a decision but it's it's some of us old school people have mcm and mcsm then mm -hmm. well, there's, like, there's like four, 14 uh, mcms and mcsms among the speakers this year wow and so uh, is there is there anybody on the list who is oh yeah there was one so I wonder if there's anybody on the list who is not either not MVP not a AWS or not, few, not a Microsoft few, employee they're also really good guys like Patrick Curran uh, yeah. like I don't Mike know Fitz. Uh, Mike Fitz Mike. right I mean Mike Fitz has no badge but that, that does not make him any less uh, brilliant as he is and Matthias Walter from Skybo. Right. Yeah, but this is okay. Uh, but yeah, basically, um, this is uh, most of the people do have uh, do have either MEP or MCM or Microsoft uh, corporate or AWS co corporate. We see Louis down there uh, with AWS badge. So some even changing badge. We need to change the badge for Yetro soon. And yes, yes. And Vesa's job title was incorrect as well, all the way down. Why am I? What am I? Senior program uh, yeah, manager. All right, try, try, try. Need to change this to principal immediately. Yes, of course. <laughs> okay. Do it. Do it now. Awesome. Edit it now. <laughs> actually, actually, I'm doing it. Actually, I'm doing it as we speak. <laughs> there we go. Okay, some other topics. So, but yeah, European Collaboration Summit coming uh, later uh, this year, uh, May 27th to 29th. Uh, this is actually a week after the Las Vegas SharePoint conference as well. Right. Now, uh, where we have awesome, uh, awesome, absolute lineup for speakers and sessions as well. But now the TARDIS is in here. We wanted to kind of call out this one. SBC Evans in general uh, this weekend. Uh, there's Pruno uh, in Czech Republic Saturday, and then there's Cape Town. Um, Pruno Europe, Cape Town. This is part of the whatever uh, tourney which the guys are doing, right? So right. Uh, Alistair and whoever whoever is is now driving through the South Africa and having a ship on Saturdays in every single country, wasn't uh, not well every single city, right? It's I think they're doing uh, job work. They're doing uh, Pretoria and Cape Town as much as I know. Yeah. They had one okay. last weekend as well. Yeah, it's, it was it was job work the last year. Uh, last yes, week. yes, it was. Yes, it was actually. Good point. Yeah, they that's pretty cool setup as well. So they drive through the the, the country uh, and then have a ship on Saturdays on on the cities. So pretty cool. Now, uh, on other topics, so from the events, so this one was an interesting <laughs> discussion point because last week we, we were brainstorming, I think it was uh, uh, Chao's sample uh, related on the site designs, creation, yep. if you're a tenant administrator, a web part where you can use, uh, which can use to manage site designs. And then we said mm -hmm. with Wildek that, well, it would make sense if you could actually extend uh, the tenant admin UIs in SharePoint Online. And then I think it was about Boo Cameron, um, ask about that one in Twitter. We had a quick chat and like, hey, go on, make a use use for entry. And now there's 145 uh, votes. Um, right. Yeah, within a one week, so, which is actually so pretty cool. Does that mean that we, that somebody will now look at this because we reached the limit, or are are we 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 there yet? Somebody, well, a few more votes. Uh, sorry, a few more votes would definitely help. Uh, the somebody who will be initially looking into this uh, in the Dev platform is actually within this call. So it's either you, Addis? you or Addis. me. So. <laughs> it, it will be Addis. No, no, we're all doomed. <laughs> but yeah. So um, we're looking, and uh, definitely we'll start an internal discussions on this one. Um, I'm actually pretty closely connected with the admin guys because I've been helping on releasing the SharePoint Online PowerShell now for many years to whatever historical reasons. It's kind of a long, long uh, running task just landed on my table. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll talk with uh, the right people in the right level because it would make sense to have some sort of a way of modifying, the, for example, put a left navigation to be able to add links and then uh, add pages and then add those with custom web parts or experiences, editing experiences there. Um, good, a really great idea. 
really great idea. Thank you, Boo, uh, for actually creating an item for this one. It, adding the votes is really important because more votes means that there's more clear pressure and demand for the community and customers and partners to actually make this capability happen. So, so with this, everybody who's going to watch this episode, please give us at least one, one vote. And we know how many, many people view the episode, so we will know how many are yet to give us a vote. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Indeed. Now let's go to the normal articles. Uh, for, so here we'll say this one actually came out from Yannick this morning. Uh, really cool setup. Uh, Adding in place scripted tutorials in your SPFX components. So basically, uh, I think if I scroll down, the, the GIF animation really uh, gives it away. So the basic idea is that a clarification how you could build this kind of a guided uh, UI click, uh, click here, click here, click here, and this is what happens uh, within my web part. Um, which is, there are ISV providers on this area as well. Uh, and of course you can uh, implement this kind of things also inside of your uh, web part as an experience. And for within the SharePoint Online, there's even out of the box experiences which are doing exactly this. And they're kind of pointing out a certain button on, hey, have you seen? Here's a button. Yeah, those, just, are, those are the ones you always click away, right? Yeah, that, that is true. That's absolutely true. Um, but I, I think, the, well, just to be kind of a clarifying for those as well, a lot of those are actually there for collecting telemetry and feedback around uh, users and in, in educating people that, hey, by the way, yeah. are you aware of this? And and the people in this call, sure, we were aware of the capability, but quite often the end users might not be. So they, they actually start then using the capability and, and using our telemetry, we can then see, is it successful or not? But I think this is really cool setup from Yannick. Uh, I think he provided a, a, a solution and a code, uh, proof of concept code uh, available for it as well. So um, if somebody needs to have that kind of a guidance in their solutions. Now, yes. This one will say a nice one from, uh, no, who's Harsh. first? All Harsh. the way up, all the way up. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Um, so showing holiday events with number of days to go using list view formatting. So without code, well. Well. Without. <laughs> <laughs> Define code. <laughs> yes. Well, if you look at the, well, the, the, the characters you have to type to get this one done, I'm sure. not sure if sure. I find this easier or to just write few <laughs> lines of, of, of code. But of I'm course, there has to be a I'm really pretty sure what I find easier, but this is actually cool for the people who don't want uh, to, to uh, deploy whatever. Uh, well, I think the interesting to... aspect to to this one is it's not custom code in a way that it doesn't give you a unrestricted playground. You can only yeah. do a few things, so you cannot go wild with that. You cannot do crazy things like embed scrims, pull in external libraries, and so forth and so on. So in a way, it's sure, it's a flexible approach, but it's in a way safe that it doesn't expose you to as many risks as, for example, building your own web part. Sure, sure. What we need is the SPFX component which would actually produce this JSON in the end. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I think the number one challenge obviously on, on all of this is, uh, and I know that we're internally working on this one with uh, within our engineering as well, is that, okay, so do you really need to create all of this JSON manually by yourself? And right now answer is yes, you yes. do. There is no editor for it. Um, and sure, we should come up with a, some sort of, a, sort of an editor uh, for it could relatively fast. Right now the- It would be helpful. The, the function and everything is moving so fast that it's not necessarily the right time. Whenever the innovation on this area will slightly slow down, then coming off with an editor probably makes more sense. But That's cool. hey. Monday, Monday throwback. And back in the time we thought XML was bad. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing wrong with XML. No. <laughs> <Yes>. um, <laughs> <laughs> but actually, JSON is already old school because it's all about YAML, right? So, oh, <laughs> yeah. Mm, next. 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 <laughs> um, this is from Alex. Uh, so, Microsoft Craft uh, get driven item by file absolute URL. So, um, we talked about this one before the call. So, there is no you no direct method to get a drive item based on a file absolute URL. So you need to do some additional tricks and what the, that's Alex, uh, Alex from SharePoint Alex is basically explaining uh, what you need to do and make things happen. Uh, really nice, short kind of a, hey, by the way, uh, helper uh, blog post, uh, really useful as well. Sure, we should have a 
method or function to actually get get this get an item uh, at the, the actual get drive item by by file absolute URL. But hey, we don't. So it is what it is. Um, this one is from SharePoint Rider, aka well, aka SharePoint Rider. So Joseph uh, Veliach. Um, so around deploy SharePoint framework web points using Bitbucket pipelines and deployments. Um, we have been having Velin Gerkovic doing live, quite a lot of live demos around the Visual Studio DevOps uh, and automation around uh, pipelines and deployments. And this is a nice setup then if you're using a Bitbucket uh, as an option. Uh, within a GitHub, so walking through the models and then referencing, for example, Elio uh, Struve's uh, mm. tasks um, because those are highly useful uh, for this operation. So really nice, cool setup. Uh, moving on on the articles from uh, Sergey. Uh, so SharePoint framework development tips, <laughs> even more easily debug uh, production version of even more easily, even even <laughs> more. <laughs> He changed the icon of his log. Uh, look, look at the icon in the tab. Of, of course. He's oh, yeah. up yeah. to date. Yeah. Yes. Up to date. Yeah. That is true. That is true. Now, well, it is SP blog, so it should be using SharePoint. Mm. But uh, this one is basically just uh, explaining how do we bundle uh, the source files, uh, source maps, uh, properly in the bundle as easy as possible. So I can do as easy as possible debugging. Uh, in the production uh, even. So really cool setup. And obviously this, then if you don't want these to your final version, you can get rid of them. If you want them to the final version, you can bundle them in as well. So, but really nice uh, uh, clarification, how to further simplify the debugging with Visual Studio FX, uh, Visual Studio, uh, sorry, <laughs> SharePoint framework. What am I talking? <laughs> Just focus. 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 focus, yes, focus. Now, um, <laughs> this one was a good uh, from Tommy Tavela. So Tommy has been creating this Chrome SharePoint editor for quite a few years already. Um, and this one is a nice uh, new version, which is available. So a new version uh, which is supporting PMPJS um, and fixing a bug fixes around the editor. Um, this one is a really, really nice uh, extension. Uh, it gives you the capabilities of modifying, for example, JavaScript files directly in the SharePoint. Uh, you can modify technically. You could, if it's a classic master page, you can go on a classic site. You can go and modify the master page on fly without opening that one up anywhere. So there's a lot of kind of a really cool uh, capabilities here. Uh, Tommy is a a relatively in quotes old school SharePoint guy. Uh, I worked with him already ten years ago. Uh, in a real life SharePoint uh, project. So I've actually done real life SharePoint projects. 10 years back, right? That. Yes, I used to write some <laughs> code. That's amazing. So <laughs> you, that was the last millennia. It doesn't count. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, related on code. Uh, so this one was a uh, good uh, note from uh, David Sass around uh, there's a new version of Visual Studio available, and Visual Studio 2019 is having then SharePoint 2019 version finally available <laughs> natively. Uh, in the SharePoint adding creation. Now, uh, is it, uh, do you want to create SharePoint add-in still? Probably not. But if you do WSPs. that. WSPs, WSPs, yeah. right? No, let's not do WSPs. <laughs> <laughs> Stop using farm solutions. Stop if, using sandbox solutions. <laughs> I see a few edge cases uh, where you might still use add-ins. Don't mention edge. But for 99, 99% <laughs> of the cases, SPF is definitely yeah. great. So, so well, especially I mean, SharePoint hosted that in. So I, I don't think they have a really a future uh, considering they, SharePoint framework. Do, do they even have a past? <laughs> That's a fair comment. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> But uh, then provider hosted add ins, the provider hosted, the, the, the provider hosted adding model uh, is more powerful in some sense, even as a compared to Office 365 yeah. applications, because in provider hosted adding model, you can grant permissions in site collection level, which you cannot do in Azure AD. Mm -hmm. And, and that, I think that's really the key difference still related on the, the Azure AD and permissions and websites and the, the MSAL versus classic or off and provider hosted add ins. So. Yeah, but I mean, that is a relevant thing only if you think about app only access right because in the end if even if you would grant the access to the whole ad app to, to the whole environment there's still a user attached to it and if that person Correct. is not allowed to do things well bad luck right then the app Correct. cannot do anything um outside that but if it's a, a, app app only well yeah then you 
I can imagine an edge case that where you would like to have a yes. Don't mention edge <laughs> exactly. <laughs> where um, you might want to say this app is only allowed to operate on this piece of my environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a pretty edge case comparing the. Don't mention edge. edge. And like you said, uh, like you said. <laughs> <laughs> It's the combination of the adding permissions and the user permissions. So even though adding yeah. has been granted uh, high-level tenant scope permissions, if the user does not have them, and typically we are running in the context of the user as well, and that means that the user cannot actually do the stuff yeah, because the user exactly. doesn't have the permissions. So that is true. Now, uh, anyway, Visual Studio 2019 out uh, seems to be faster and more fluent and whatever. Uh, I, to, to be honest, uh, it came out last week. I haven't had a chance to install that yet. Uh, have you, either one of you guys? No, no. no I'm using Visual no, Studio Code as well. So, I, well yeah. I was, that's something I actually had for this week. I was a whole past month on the road and uh, finally yeah. settling down. I mean, there, there, there are occasionally things that I do in uh, C Sharp, but there's yep. like that's like one every few months. There's, there's definitely not a part of my daily activities. Yeah, yeah, same. Which are, as we uh, as we learned, is aggregating uh, web data into Excel. In Excel, Excel yes, 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 <laughs> uh, yes, and then and answering email, <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> Okay, um, this one was really cool. Uh, this is actually from early March, but we missed it. Uh, so this one is a, a categorized, organized and layout for Office 365 intranet with, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, with PMP templates. And this is really cool. So the page, which uh, this is a step-by-step -step guidance on the creating this kind of a page, which is completely dynamic. So based on the creation of the, and the template, well, the PMP template of the site which was created, even though everybody, every single site is either a group site or a communication site, the site is then getting grouped under a specific uh, category. And I think this is a classic, let's say, business case of having a site directory, right? Because everybody wants to have a site directory with categories. So how would this compare to what we have available today with the hub sites? Does this uh, still uh, still stand or would you still, or is there still no. room for, for this approach? I would actually say this approach still has its own scenario because the hub site, sure, you, but the hub site is more on hierarchical, still hierarchical mapping of things. Uh, this is more around what is the metadata being stamped on a site level and then surfacing those sites based on the metadata. But so you, you could you, have okay. multiple different metadata options. You could have HR project, sales project, you could have uh, additional dimensions. Uh, right. of the metadata, okay. location, uh, office, uh, whatever. And then based on the filters, you can find those uh, in the search results, right? Cool, yeah, Because sure. with, with hub sites, it's a one dimensional grouping. Uh, so yes. it's, it's, it's slightly different. But basically what happens here is that uh, it's a scenario where we're using then a uh, ID in here as the metadata getting stamped on a site level. And then uh, in the site level, uh, or in the search results, we use that metadata to surface uh, those pages automatically uh, in a nice format uh, using the BMP search web part, actually, even. So it's a really yeah, so, nice combination of things. Yeah, so to explain in from a um, different angle, the template of the site, of the, the PNP template of the site is being stamped in the property bag of the, the, uh, bag root, of web, the, or yes, the root web. Correct. Yeah, and from 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 where it is being set to an indexed pro property, and from there it, it is picked up by search, right? Cor correct. Mm. So you you mentioned that some of these sites are modern sites, but modern sites by default cannot have you cannot write to pro pro property bag, right? So how? Yes. So how um, here's the here's the actual power script uh, power power script. This is power script. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, la, 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 la. Here's the PowerShell script, uh, which, uh, the, which uh, is being used. And uh, here we are actually enabling scripting. Uh, and that's enabling scripting for the second Two. site. <laughs> yeah. So it is a different site. Uh, it's a different site. Now, 
to you need to be able to enable scripting so you're able to update the property back values which we actually just last week we talked about this one with pat miller um uh, pat miller is our engineering manager that is it's nobody knows actually why somebody decided that the property back is being blocked when scripting uh, is disabled Oh. Because it doesn't actually really make that much sense, but just in case it was blocked. So to be able to update the property back in modern pages, modern sites, you need to actually disable, or oh, sorry, enable scripting, and you, then you actually set uh, the property. Uh, but then in this case, unfortunately, the scripting is not again disabled, which should be the optimal okay. situation. Yes. Why do we want to disable scripting is to, that we want to make sure that only approved scripts which are coming through app catalog are being allowed to be running on the site collection so that people don't actually hurt the company or themselves uh, or the sites where they are um, by embedding scripts which shouldn't be running there. So. But again, uh, cool setup, uh, really cool setup, uh, and getting a nice automatic uh, rendering of the of the of the sites uh, in a site directory way. Well, I know the, I know that a lot of people from EF Blueprint, uh, it's a German company, are going to be at the Collab Summit, so I uh, can only guess that TX is also going to be there. So if somebody wants to meet that guy, this magazine is the place. <laughs> yes. You see? Yeah, marketing. There we go. <laughs> Good. And then the final thing uh, which uh, I run into, I think, during the weekend or uh, on last week, this was a, a cool idea uh, on having a theme wizard available. And so in, in the site itself, having all of the, the capabilities of adjusting uh, the needed settings and colors, uh, which is basically a modern Office 365 theme uh, setting here. Um, because this is basically Let's see, is it actually uh, poking around, da, 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 but nothing would me actually let me apply the theme. Da, 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 there's the load function. What are you looking for? Uh, I'm just, I, I was just looking, is it actually updating the theme in the tenant level? Then, and you could actually do that, absolutely, if it's not doing yep. that. So yeah, yeah there is a REST yep. API for doing that. But I guess the point here is that you can preview that theme as you're editing it without yes. the need to apply it. Because right. out of the box, you can only preview that the, the theme by applying it. And right. then it's like, oh, yes. yeah, it isn't right. So I need to get back and then go. Yeah. And here you can do that on the fly directly in UI. So you can see yep. every change, how yep. how how it uh, um, affects the UI. And then yep. if it's OK, you can download. Yeah, so looking at the UI, it only seems like you can do do download the theme, download PowerShell, but there yeah, is no way to apply it. Yeah. Or apply, yeah. The, technically, there is an apply uh, REST API uh, method available, uh, which should actually, you can actually apply only in a site level as well. Uh, so yeah. so if you scro scroll down, I'm sure that he accepts P in PRs. Yes, he does. He does. So. Uh, <laughs> Vesa, yeah. this is your yeah. chance to write code. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's enough for the article. So let me stop presenting. Uh, before and let's you do that, uh, I, I did it already. What was the thing? Uh, I want you. I want you to refresh the speaker list in the column summit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fixed it already? I did. Well, okay, the question is: fine. Is it live? Because it's of live. the cache propagate getting it's across live. the world, across all the nodes and all of that. Uh, yeah. Anyway, but he believe he's a principal. I can I can confirm that it's live. Yeah, it is there. So <laughs> thank you, thank you, Aris. I don't care. I don't. You can call me cleaning lady. So I don't. I don't really care. <laughs> That's quite often my job, cleaning oh, stuff. Uh, really, really, yeah, or right. well, being I'm, the lovely assistant, uh, making things happen. So hey, that's, but, that's cool. I'm working from my home office as well. I know the drill. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't referring to that, but that's you're cleaning exactly the house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up, what's up with this week? Uh, it's now Monday. Uh, any specific interesting plans for you guys? Addis first. For me, I'm uh, got to do some um, POCs for Syskit, and uh, basically. We already have our uh, product which is targeting SharePoint Online, it's called Cisco Security Manager. We are improving and expanding it rapidly. Um, we want it to be on, SP, uh, on the pair with SP.Skit as soon as possible uh, for the uh, cloud stuff. So I've got a nice, some really nice technical work to do in the next few days. 
and which is which makes me happy. In Visual Studio of Aldec this time. Yeah, 2019, <laughs> right? 2019. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Fair point. What about you, Waldek? Any, any good plans? Um, absolutely. Um, I have a plan of few interviews with customers, to basically to learn more about challenges that they have with 365, managing that, and so forth and so on. And then another one interesting is that a while back, we were contacted by an ISV who built solution for 365. And basically, they want to have a second pair of eyes to look at it like, is there anything that we can improve? What do you think? Are we doing the right thing? Is there a risk involved in us missing something that would affect us in the long run? So basically, they wanted to have a person to talk to and and see if there's anything to improve. So um, there will be a really cool set of calls that we will have right. about me to learn from them what they do, what do they need, what are yep. the, the, the gaps, and how do they work around that, that I might even feed back to you to you yep. and then on the other hand trying to help them with everything that i know um and help them build a product yep yeah, absolutely makes sense makes sense and you cool. uh <laughs> so i have a massive list of things uh which i need to get cleaned uh so but it, it's right now getting ready for build uh europe as the the las vegas so sharepoint conference 2019 and then european collaboration summit so all of that is coming relatively soon making sure that our plans are uh blocked on that one uh but then i actually this is actually kind of interesting i'm dropping by in a local university on tuesday monday a uh, tuesday thursday morning um to have a chat with uh, uh with the students um which is always actually fun because cool. um, i still remember being a student by myself and getting my bachelor degree really I'm not a master i'm a that bachelor. is like so that is like way back, right? Yeah, yeah, but it, it's, it's one of those things where somebody's reaching to you that can you come and explain what do you do and how things are? It's like, yeah, actually, of course, because that, that those were always the most difficult, interesting things. Somebody actually dropping by and explaining how did they end up doing what they do? So yeah, how, okay. how does the theory work in real life? Yes. Right? Like yes. you go to school, you learn about how things are supposed to be, and then you go to work and there's a reality. Yes. Right, and there's uh, there's no there's no not that much connection between the two. <laughs> no, I recall like when I was at school, I would learn everything about UML and this and that, and <laughs> no one cares. So, Malik, Malik, you are software architect, as am I. Uh, how many times in a real life project did you make a deep dive UML schema of your architectures? Every single time, every day, right. every day, <laughs> every <laughs> command we have in CLI, I have a personal <laughs> UML model on. Remove the it's always a single <laughs> class. It's always a single class, so it's easy. <laughs> but now, back in the times, Visual Studio could create some UML for you. I did oh, yeah. use yes, it yeah. I did I use that to impress customers a few times, but that was about it, basically. Yeah. But now that's that's actually this is this I could actually go on and on on this topic, but uh, one of my favorite topics. But it's interesting to see how the everything has evolved within, let's say, 15 to 20 years from the times when we were studying. Well, I, I graduated in 99 or something like that, uh, which is 20 years ago. That's horrifying. Last year, yeah, school, the last Holy sh No, I graduated actually 2004. Anyway, it uh, doesn't matter. But um, <laughs> on Friday, like you said, it's, it's or, or, or Friday, I just don't know which year. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But but the fact that we weren't taught to use a UML and drawing and specification and everything else, and how the how the whole IT you know IT industry has gone to the model where where it's good enough IT. Is it good enough? Is it working? Is it is it doing what it's supposed to do? Well, it seems to be doing what it's supposed to do. Ship it. F five. F five. F five. Ship it. It compiles. Ship it. And then let's fix it afterwards. If there's any small thing, people give us feedback. And it's 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 partly horrifying. It's partly kind of an interesting and uh, that there, we run out of the, the time for market is so small that you need to push stuff out. Otherwise, yeah. you lose the game. We can have this discussion just, before. You settle for a minimum viable product, and then usually you don't even achieve uh, that. True. <laughs> <laughs> you minimum, so. True. And yeah, we obviously are not referring only to minimal product yeah. in Office 365, but it's, it's in general. It is trend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The yeah, whole absolutely. industry, the trend is that, well, 
there say everybody is competing based on prices, uh, so the costs are have to be keep, uh, cut down. So you can come up with a um, architect or, or let's say a cost plan, which is 50% of planning, because like, no, no, can we cut the planning and just do the thing? And it's like, well, <laughs> how would I know what to do? <laughs> well, I'm, but I guess, what? <laughs> but I guess on the other hand, right, in, in a pestle, the other day I read an article from a lady who, who used to work at Microsoft and she was a part of the office team. And she recalls the days do when... We, do we want to hear this? Do we want to hear this? Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I mean, the reality, right? So <laughs> back in the days, there was the cadence of releasing something for three years and in three yes. years, and whatever you shipped, you had to live with for the next three years because yes. it, it took that long to get a new version. Yep. So back then, the consequence of every line of code shipped was way bigger than now where you can just say, you know, it's in the cloud. If we see that... What we thought was wrong, we can adjust yeah. it more easily than in a past, like, you know, press all of the fl floppies and CDs, DVDs, and then send them out to oh, everybody. Yeah. Like, that was immense cost. Yeah. Like, logistics sure. of sure. that only, that was already a huge e uh, effort. Whereas now, it's like, you just push another build and you say sorry, because, like, well, sometimes you are wrong, but at least now, you have the ability to adjust it more easily as opposite sure. to you have, like, Damn, now we have to fix the world because our software is out there and there's no way for us to update anybody other than go That's to true. every one of them, bring new floppies. I did have a comment on this, but then I remembered I need to be politically correct. Yeah, this is this is a family show. So. Right. <laughs> So no, no comment from Adam. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> I think that's that's a great great segue to stop the recording. So thank you, thank you, Addis, for joining us. Uh, thank you for having a, a good discussion. Always thank fun to have both. a chat with Addis. <laughs> so, and thank you, Wanlek. Uh, we'll come up with a new ship on the weekly in a week. So bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.